Hey guys, uh, my name is Tony Lyons and I'm coming back with another tutorial and this time it's going to be merge operations and uh, this one is, is going to be pretty basic um, but it's really kind of the fundamentals and a lot of people already know this um, sort of stuff I'm going to be going over uh, what, what an over is and how to manipulate the alpha to get better results on keys and stuff and uh, I'm going to be going over such things as uh, merges, what an admix is, uh, I kinda already went over blending background and green screen edges in my last tutorial which was uh, despill uh, techniques. Uh, I'm gonna leave a light wrap and matching blacks for another tutorial but I'm gonna be going over pre-multiplications and color corrections and uh, adjusting alphas before the merge and so I'm gonna dive right into it and if you are a little bored and know most of this stuff already just try skipping ahead to the gamma and the alpha section which uh, which might be um, some new info for some people that are already already have all these basics uh, down so uh, most of this merging stuff gets explained if you've been through um, like a education uh, on compositing or something, but if you're just kind of discovering it on your own, sometimes it can be really helpful to have it, like, uh, a really good breakdown of pre molting and why it's important. And a lot of times I've I've known that it hasn't really um, been taught very well, and it can be kind of confusing. So I'm going to try to break it down uh, as simply as I can with some of these examples, and I apologize if they are too simple. Uh, but I feel like it's good to just get the basics over with. So let's just dive right in. Okay, so I apologize if uh, this is going to be simplistic, but for these examples, I'm just going to be using uh, two colors, some tan color and blue color. So tan is foreground and background is blue. And I'm going to be using this alpha or this mask uh, with the tan color. So I'm going to be just using these three elements here and combining them with some different math. So I'm going to go over the first part right now. Uh, let me show you how to do a multiply in Nuke and what's it, what it's doing. So if you just set a merge to multiply and you have this image which you can consider the mat or the alpha and you have the tan image if I were to multiply these together, uh, you'll notice you can only see the tan where the white was uh, on the alpha. And the reason why that is is because if you multiply something by 1, it's the same color. And if you multiply it by 0, it becomes 0. And it's a progression um, within that ramp there. So an important thing to note is that these colors, after they're multiplied, uh, it is actually it's not actually getting darker. It's just getting more transparent in a way. Um, for example, this uh, pixel value is not darker than this pixel value. It's just uh, less visible. Uh, it's more see-through. You can see that from the now alpha channel because it has also punched a hole in this tan color's alpha so they're kind of connected the pixel uh, the pixel has a transparency value which is represented in the alpha channel now and the reason you can confirm this is because you can divide uh, this image by the original alpha or the original mat and I just did a merge divide and you'll see it undoes the multiply, it counteracts it. And this is what unpremultiplying does. And you'll see if I take this image and divide it by the same alpha, I have now the same uh, pixel values, the same color that I had in the beginning. Uh, so again, they, it's not darker, it was just more see-through. And that's a good way of th thinking about it, is uh, just how transparent it is. Now let's move on to uh, 
adding, which is really simple. But uh, say I had this image again, and I have my background image now, which is blue. And if I plus them together, uh, it's just going to plus all the pixels together. And so you lose that color because it, now it becomes a new color when you're adding the blue color to it. And the blue obviously remains the same because uh, it is adding zero. So it remains exactly the same. Now those are really basic, but that those are the ingredients of pretty much everything we're about to be doing uh, in the following sections. So it's important to understand uh, how multiplying and adding works inside of Nuke. So I'm going to cover um, overing now. And overing is a tricky thing because it sounds really simple. And here's an example of just an over, a merge over of the same two images. And you can see instead of the plus example, you would now uh, get what you would expect when I say I'm going to put this image over uh, this blue image. Um, there is a little bit of math going on that we don't usually talk about, but here is the equation uh, that you'll see. It's the A image plus the B image times the inverse of the A image's alpha. Uh, but that can be really confusing to look at. So what I did was uh, I recreated an over with basic nodes that we just covered uh, so that we can explain the math a little better. So again, we have our three elements, our tan image, our alpha, and our blue image. And so what you do first is multiply the tan image by the alpha, and we get what we would expect. Um, but then at the same time, we take the inverted image of the alpha, which is just the exact opposite, so all the black turns white and all the white turns black and it inverses the ramp and then we multiply that uh, with the B image so it's like two halves uh, and then we take those images and plus them together and all those in between pixels uh, now get blended appropriately with the right percentage according to the alpha and the other two sides remain the same as the original uh, pixel values that they were. And so it's really that simple. It's really not much to it. The uh, equation is a little difficult to understand sometimes, but as long as you know that it's just taking the alpha, then multiplying it, and then inverting it and multiplying it and plusing those two images together, uh, it's pretty easy. So another way of looking at it is that the alpha is kind of a cookie cutter and on the white side it cuts out the A input and on the black side it cuts out the B input and pluses them together and combines the two images and uh, it accounts for every pixel and blends with the appropriate percentage that the alpha is representing. The next section can be pretty difficult to understand uh, and we're going to be talking about pre-multiplying and unpremultiplying. Uh, and the problems that come along with them. So, as we talked about, uh, unpremulting is the same as dividing by the alpha. And since the alpha is just uh, multiplying the original image, you're getting back uh, the true color of of your uh, image. So when you when you unpremultiply a premultiplied image, you're revealing that image's true colors without any transparency. Um, but if you try to over that, you know, raw, true color image, uh, it will plus the pixels that are outside of the transparency. They're not being represented anymore by this alpha. And so it will just plus them. And let's take a look at why it does that uh, if we put it through that breakdown I did. So here we have the foreground color tan color multiplied by the alpha and you got your blue color multiplied by the inverse of it but then right here is our unpremult step and you can see instead of plussing uh, this nicely ramped tan color it would be plussing this full uh, tan color 
to the extreme here. And so since the operation is a plus at the very end, uh, it doesn't respect that transparency and everything just gets plused. So that's what happens if you unpremultiply an image before overing it. It gets brighter. It pluses it. Okay, so we just learned that unpremolting makes it brighter. So let's figure out what premolting does. And as you might guess, it ends up making it darker. And it's for a similar reason. Uh, if you premolt something that's already premolted, the transparency has already been mapped out. So if you pre-multiply the alpha again, if you multiply it again by the alpha, it gets darker, but it only gets darker in the RGB color. Nothing happens to the alpha. So what you're doing is you're misaligning the transparency map. Now it's thinking it's the same amount of transparency that it used to be, but now it's on a darker image that we started out with. Uh, let me explain that a little further by breaking it down again. So we have these two halves that are supposed to be plus together to create a nice full image. But instead, the transparency map stays the same, but now the pixels get darker because we've multiplied them again. We did it twice. So when you go to plus them, uh, the percentage is now out of line and because our B image got multiplied this is also fading to black so if you don't have the exact percentage that uh, was supposed to fill in those gaps uh, say it was at 50% blue now it would need 50% tan to be a full color that it's supposed to be but if you're 50% tan is now 25% tan, then the whole image gets a little darker because it doesn't add up to 100% anymore. And this is one of the biggest mistakes uh, in compositing, and you'll see it a lot uh, when you're looking at smoke and green screen keys and basically anything that's transparent. This pre molt or this double pre molt happens quite a bit, and it's notorious for the dark edge. So if you ever see a dark edge, a good trick to do is to try unpremultiplying it. Because you might set it back a step and undo that premult and get it back to the original. So you kind of cancel out that step. And this might fix it right away. It might not, but it might. So that's something to try. And basically you can consider premult and unpremult, they're just multiplying divides, so they cancel each other out if you put two next to each other. Uh, so the important thing to know is unpremolting before and over will make it brighter and double premolting will make it darker and we've kind of explained why and and how those um, those two images without the correct representation in the transparency map of the alpha will not add up to the 100% blend that it's supposed to add up to and instead will be a weird mix of, of dark or light colors. Okay, so this next section is going to be gammaing the alpha uh, on the A input side of the over um, just before we put it over. And uh, we're going to see exactly what that does. And this is going to build upon everything we've just talked about, uh, specifically that on pre molting before you over makes the image a little brighter because it pluses and double premolting makes the edge darker. So, if we look at this regular over and we start messing with this gamma, which is only affecting the alpha channel of the A input, you can see uh, increasing the gamma uh, makes the edge darker and decreasing the gamma makes the edge brighter. And this is a really handy tip to, uh, to quickly uh, make your blending transparent pixels brighter or darker if they're uh, one or the other. So, why does it do that? Uh, it can be kind of confusing, so I try to break it down. And the way I try to break it down is uh, this merge over backdrop is representing everything that happens inside of a merge over node. 
And uh, just to quickly recap, uh, it first takes the alpha channel from the A input, inverts it, and then multiplies the B. And then it pluses both of those uh, A and B inputs together. So that's exactly what happens inside of a merge. And so our gamma is outside of the merge right before it. And so what is going on? Well, the gamma is only affecting the gray pixels, so all the, everything that's transparent. And what it's doing is, because it's only set to alpha channel, and because uh, red, green, blue, and alpha are supposed to be tied together in that uh, the transparency and the RGB pixels are kind of locked down. It, it says, hey, it's this transparent, uh, and it's expected to be that transparent when it goes to blend it, the B side. But uh, when we adjust the alpha only, we're kind of throwing that transparency map uh, out of whack. We're, we're kind of messing with it. Um, so what happens, uh, funny enough, is uh, A does not change uh, in the RGB sense. This image at the top is the same as the image right before it gets plussed on. Nothing's changed. But by changing the alpha from the A side, because the B side is uh, taking the alpha from the A, inverting it, and multiplying it, uh, the alpha, uh, or the gamma of the alpha, is actually affecting the B side. And you're basically um, telling it to show more of the blue or show less of the blue in that transparent region. So when we bring the gamma up, we're saying that A is more opaque, which means that blue needs to be more transparent, and when we bring it down, it's saying that A is more transparent and blue or the B side needs to be more opaque. And what that results in is uh, the blue side ends up either plussing or becoming too dark and not adding up to 100% anymore. And so in a way, you're kind of recreating that uh, unpremult or double premult uh, error, but in this scenario, we are controlling it ourselves, so we can, we're, we're kind of tricking it uh, into blending to our choosing. And this can be really handy for uh, transparent edges in a key, or um, adding smoke to an image, because uh, smoke is really transparent, or basically anything that's transparent. If you need it to be brighter, just throw a gamma and pop it down. If you need it to be darker, just uh, throw a gamma and pump it up. And notice, just really quickly, uh, nothing at all is going to happen if I throw a gamma node on the B side because uh, the B's alpha is not even uh, it's not even used inside of the merge. It doesn't care about the B's alpha. It could be anything. So it's only the A side that it cares about. And uh, the real thing I want you guys uh, to gain from this is that uh, by doing this little gamma thing, it's just a really easy way, um, probably the easiest way, to adjust your edge uh, kind of as a last minute uh, trick to make it either brighter or darker. So I just wanted to uh, jump back to this uh, old example from the um, despilling section or the despilling techniques video just to um, show the relevance of what I just talked about in the adjusting the gamma section and if you remember I kinda did uh, this to this guy's chin and to this lady's hair uh, I added a grade and I started to adjust the gamma so uh, I know that uh, in this tutorial we've been using you know just colors to, to get the point across because, because it's a uh, a little easier to understand sometimes when you're not looking at uh, different colors and images and um, that sort of thing but uh, this stuff does have obviously practical uses um, and you can see them right now when you make the gamma uh, higher and everything gets darker when you make it lower and everything blends uh, a lot nicer and so uh, all these techniques uh, I'm talking about or all this math I'm kinda talking about in this tutorial definitely can be used um, while blending images um, so don't just consider them two solid colors but uh, just an easier way to understand them as I explain them yeah, back to it
Okay, so now I'm going to try to explain uh, a pretty difficult concept, uh, which is AdMix. And it's a merge tool, uh, and a lot of people probably know about it, but uh, they've opened it up and kind of got a little confused um, by how it works or what's going on in the background. And, and I'm going to try to clear uh, all that stuff up so that you guys can uh, confidently use the AdMix uh, to get the results that you need. Uh, so AdMix is a merge tool, and... Uh, the first thing you probably ought to know about it is uh, the pre-multiplied checkbox is turned off. Uh, and what that is referring to is the A input, the admix. Uh, it's expecting a non-pre-multiplied uh, A input, but uh, usually people have pre-multiplied, which just means that you know the alpha is tied to the RGBs uh, and it has transparency. And so uh, when you plug it in, you'll want to check on pre-multiplied if you have a pre-multiplied A input. So just check that on and uh, one thing to know is uh, by its default uh, AdMix is actually the exact same as just a regular over. It gives you the same result. So if you don't tweak anything it's going to be the same thing as an over. So uh, that's that's good to know. It's a good starting place. Um, so what you can do is uh, just drop a point by hitting uh, Control alt or Command alt if you're on Mac and uh, you'll see that if I start adjusting uh, some curves that I'm getting uh, interactive results here and the kind of general way to think about it is uh, if I'm bringing these curves uh, up it's the transition is getting brighter and if I'm bringing these curves uh, down then the transition is getting darker and this is using the principles that we just previously talked about about gammaing up and down uh, the alpha except this time uh, we have a curve for B and a curve for A. Unlike before where I, I threw a gamma on uh, the A, as we discussed, uh, the gamma was actually only applying to the B input and nothing was happening to the A. But the admix kind of gives us control over both A and B. Let me just clarify one more thing. If you go to select these dots uh, after you've put them down, if you hold uh, control or command down uh, and pick that back up you can freely move it around or else uh, if you don't hold anything down you can move it uh, from left to right or up and down but it does not have a kind of a free motion so just remember that so control alt to add a point and then control to uh, drag it around so I figured the best way to break down the uh, admix was to show you what was kind of going on inside the node and uh, to do that I kind of recreated uh, what an admix is doing uh, and that is represented inside of this blue backdrop here. And so we have our A input that comes in, uh, the alpha that is being inverted and applied to the B, and then the alpha that is being affected by uh, our curve, and then both, both plus together. Uh, so let's take a closer look at what's going on. So I'll follow the A input first. And uh, unlike before where the A curve did not get uh, adjusted, uh, we have a kind of a solution for that right here. Uh, and so the first thing that it does is it separates the transparency alpha from the RGB by unpremulty. So that gives us the normal RGB and the alpha. So it kind of separates it. Then uh, it uses a color lookup node, which is pretty much the same thing as a, a curves in Photoshop. It's just uh, mapping one to zero. And so you can consider this a transition point from uh, white to black in your alpha. And uh, this is where um, the A curve, the one that goes from uh, bottom to top, this is where that's being affected. So if you see, uh, when I adjust it, uh, I'm adjusting only those uh, transparent pixels, kind of like the, uh, the gamma adjustment. But you can get a lot more refined, uh, detailed curves here uh, than just the gamma curve. So it gives you a lot more detail. Um, so I'm going to leave that, actually. Uh, after we do the curve, uh, it is then pre-mult again so that the new uh, so that the new alpha is applied. And so if we look before and after, uh, it is kind of remapping the transparency of that image. And if we go back a step and see what's happening on the, the B side, so we shuffle our alpha and uh, we have another color lookup. Curve. And the difference between uh, this color lookup and the other color lookup that was going on the A is that uh, by default it is inverted. Uh, and so what was 0 to 1 is now 1 to 0. 
which actually uh, flips the uh, curve. And let me just demonstrate. So if you see by default the color lookup has a, a 0 to 1 curve, but if I just kind of flip these, uh, you'll see that it just inverted it so that what was white is now black and black is now white. And it, uh, So once it inverts it, uh, that is when you are doing your curve adjustment. And so that is actually why you get the X on the admix. So that you can remember, uh, A is the one going from 0 to 1 and B is the one going from 1 to 0. And it's 1 to 0 because it is inverted. And you can kind of see uh, with this X, it's actually it's adding up perfectly to uh, to 100% anywhere on uh, the curve. So say it was 25% A, then it would have to be 75% B by default. And so when you when you're adding the curves and adjusting them, you're actually changing uh, the relationship and you're making it not add up to 100% anymore, and kind of breaking the relationship between transparency and RGB, causing it to either uh, double pre-mult or um, add the extra value. And so that's why it's going uh, lighter or darker. So once these curves are uh, adjusted by the color lookups and you've adjusted the, the curve there, uh, they are then applied to the A and B uh, and plus together. And so uh, the combination of unique curve tweaks uh, from A and, or B kind of creates these unique uh, light or dark tra uh, transitions. So now that I've uh, shown what's going on inside the AdMix, uh, I'm going to show you guys some pretty good techniques to actually use it to get what you want. And so if I uh, tweak the curve, that's A, that goes from 0 to 1, you'll see that I'm if I bring it up from where it started from, I'm actually adding A. I'm tweaking the A side. And uh, likewise, if I bring it down, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not adding enough of A, causing it to look dark, because uh, B is not compensating for it. Um, so that is on the A side, and I can do the same on the B side. And it almost looks like a similar result, but you have to realize that uh, if I'm tweaking the B side, I'm actually adding or subtracting uh, the amount of B side that you see. And when I'm tweaking the A curve, I'm actually adding or subtracting the amount of A that you see. And so with the combination of the two, you can get really unique uh, kind of results. Um, uh, you don't have to drop points down. Uh, I've seen people also just take these curves here. Uh, see if I select one of these corners, uh, there's a curve. And you can just kind of like tweak it up a little bit, uh, like so. If you, if you add more contrast to the curve, and by that you kind of make an S shape out of them, uh, that'll actually make the transition tighter, which is kind of interesting. Um, I've seen people do that to make kind of like a tighter uh, edge that wasn't so uh, smooth, I guess. Um, and the hotkeys for that is uh, Z puts them back to normal, I believe. And uh, if you hit H, uh, it makes the curve horizontal. So that's kind of a cool place to start uh, sometimes, uh, but it's usually too far and you have to pull it back. Um, so to get it back to the default, you just hit Z on these curves. Um, or else you can just drop points down and make your own custom curve uh, and make your own uh, contrast. Uh, but you can get some serious results uh, with this. And, and if you know exactly which side you're tweaking, you can reveal more or less of A or B. I think every compositor should know uh, about the admix and the ability to uh, mix things uh, differently. Instead of just using uh, the merge, because as, as we saw, by default, the merge is just the same exact thing uh, as the admix. So uh, definitely get into it. Uh, I would recommend trying it out. Uh, it, it's really, really useful for uh, things like smoke or transparency, uh, like hair, or if you have... Um, like a part of a dress that's transparent or something. I mean, you can really make it either brighter or darker depending on what the background is, and uh, it's really really helpful. So uh, definitely try it out. I think Admix is probably the most difficult uh, merging tool to use uh, and to wrap your head around. It's probably not going to be too easy at first, but I think it'll make sense once you start adjusting these curves. And uh, it's definitely something that all good compositors should know about and that will give you an extra edge uh, when simply merging doesn't give you the result that you want. 
Um, for me, however, uh, I usually start with this uh, gamma trick instead of the admix because it's just so easy to, to throw a gamma on and it's just alpha. And, uh, you know, half the time it'll get me to really where I want to be. But uh, when it comes down to the tougher situations, I would definitely recommend using uh, the admix because you have that extra control and uh, you're controlling both of the A and B instead of just the gamma, which was affecting only B. So the last thing I want to talk about is uh, color correction and on pre-multiplied problems or pre-multiplication problems uh, when uh, we do color correcting. And I know a lot of you know about this, uh, and sometimes it can be shrouded with with mystery. Uh, they don't know when to do it or what to look for or you know why something is going wrong, and uh, a lot of people either don't know uh, the correct way to do color corrections or they they haven't been taught or they, they don't exactly uh, understand the reasoning behind why they need to on pre multiply before they do a color correction so let's just go through uh, an example now we have this uh, tan image with the transparency map kind of baked in the alpha channel is being applied and so we talked about this before uh, if I quickly throw an on pre -mult, uh, you'll see that this is the representation of the RGB pixels uh, in this region here. Um, but when we pre-mold it, the, the pixel color has not changed. The RGB has not changed. The, uh, the visibility or the transparency has changed. And as a result, it's causing it to look dark. Um, and go from you know a light area to a dark area, but but don't be fooled, it's not actually getting darker. Um, it's just getting more transparent, you just see it less. Um, but when you do non-linear color corrections, and by non-linear, what I mean is uh, color corrections that need to kind of determine where the pixel is in order to do the color correction. A really great example of this is hue correct. You can see if you hover over this area, uh, it's telling me that okay, this color is, uh, you know, tan or you know, in the yellow region. So if we go and we bring this down, uh, it would bring down the tan color. But if we try to use the same hue correct on the constant, it wouldn't do anything because the constant is not tan. So this is a really, really straightforward example, but it, it's, it needs to know what the color is before actually doing uh, a hue correct. An example of uh, a linear uh, color correction is, is a multiply. Because, I'll give you an example, if I multiply this by 2, all it's doing is some basic math, but it's just taking the number and, and multiplying by 2. So it doesn't matter what you plug it into, it doesn't matter how dark something is or what color it is, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to multiply by 2 no matter what. Another um, linear color correction would be offset, which is just plussing. I think it even says add. Yep, it's add. So if I add, you know, 0.5, if I add 0.5 to this tan image or 0.5 to this constant color, uh, in either situation, I've added 0.5 to literally every pixel, um, you know, so it doesn't, it's, it's applied throughout. Now we get into a funny area when uh, we start adjusting things like gamma. Uh, let me give you an example. So gamma affects midtones, uh, and we explained what gamma was earlier, but uh, it, it, it affects midtones above all else, but in order to know, uh, you know, what area, what pixel is a midtone, it's got to first, uh, you know, calculate. Okay, where are my midtones? And in this situation, in this tan image, uh, the midtones are in the transparency region. So what that means is that this transparency region is going to get a separate color correction than these uh, flatter regions or you know the highlights or the darks. Uh, because it considers them midtones, but in reality, uh, they're not midtones. Uh, if I apply the same color correction to uh, the unpremultiplied image, you'll see it's very it's very uniform because it knows that color is the same throughout, so it's going to apply the same thing. But but 
when uh, I apply the color correction. Let's see, and then we unpremolt. You don't get the same result. You see, it's become a lot, uh, a lot more pink towards this edge, and the reason, again, is because uh, it's a, applying a different color correction depending on where the pixel started. So it thinks that it's a midtone, so it's, it's going to apply uh, that color correction more so to the midtones, and so you end up getting uh, kind of separate color corrections for different areas, and this can be really, really bad. Uh, for something that has a lot of transparency because it's not really representing the real uh, color and it's getting a separate color correction. Another really good example is the color correct. Uh, the color correct, um, very briefly, uh, it breaks down the image into shadows, midtones, and highlights. Um, now, in order to know what a shadow, a midtone, and a highlight is, it just separates the image based off luminance. Um, but if it thinks that the image is getting darker, when I adjust the shadows, uh, it's you see it's only adjusting this this dark uh, the darkest part of that strip. When in reality, again, let's take the same color correct, go over to this unpremolt. Now, once this color is the same, like it should be, like uh, like it truly is, the color correction uh, won't affect any of it really. Uh, and the reason is because it's all the same color and it doesn't consider this color a shadow. Um, so you see in this situation, let's unpremote this color correct now. And uh, in this situation here, the color correct was only affecting uh, what it thought was the dark pixels. But in reality, it should have not been affecting any of the pixels because none of these pixels are uh, considered a shadow color because the luminance wasn't dark enough. Now let's jump over to the right way to do it. And we've kind of already done an example, but you should unpremalt and then apply your nonlinear color corrections, the two that we just had and we saw. So here we're adjusting gamma. And we can adjust a little farther if we want to. We're adjusting the gamma. And then here we're adjusting the shadows again. I'll, I'll make a drastic point. I'll go even darker. Okay, but you see it affected uh, nothing. And then, after you're done with the color correction, you just pre it again. Let me take this section and bring it back. Clear up some of this stuff. So if I were to do the identical color correction and over it uh, without pre molting this is the result I get. And you can see this really, really nasty dark edge banding because of this color correct. Uh, whereas on this side, where we've unpremolted, color corrected the you know official color or the, the true representation of the RGB channel, uh, we get a, a nice smooth uh, transition. And that's because uh, we've correctly color corrected the image. Um, we, we color corrected the true representation of the pixels. Um, I hope that does a pretty good job in explaining it. And again, um, it's funny because the sometimes people say, well, I've never noticed that before. And it is kind of tricky because uh, it is mostly a problem with just non-linear color corrections, like the ones I just described. Uh, if I were to take a multiply and put it at say 2, and let's see what that looks like. So I have a multiply set to 2, and I'll copy that. Because the multiply is uh, linear, meaning that it doesn't matter uh, where the pixel is or what color the pixel uh, starts in, it's going to multiply by 2 no matter what. These results will be exactly the same. And uh, it can be deceiving sometimes because uh, you know, in some some instances, it's okay to not unpremolt, but as a general practice, uh, when you're doing a lot of stacks of uh, color corrections and you're adjusting, uh, you know, gamma and all these different things, uh, especially when you're doing color corrects, um, it's it's very very important that you uh, kind of do this unpremolt sandwich between your color corrections. Um, another way. 
uh, really briefly to avoid having to make an on malt sandwich. Uh, if you guys find it easier, um, say I do a color correction here, uh, there is an un malt buy in pretty much all of these uh, grade nodes or color correct nodes, and you can select alpha. And that will basically make uh, the sandwich for you. So if I un malt this, uh, it has the correct result because uh, you can imagine that that un malt kind of sandwich uh, happening just within the node before it does the color correction. So that's that's nice. And if you guys prefer prefer to do that, uh, I would recommend that. Uh, I always kind of like to visually see uh, where my color corrections start and end, and I like to put them all between the un malt and the pre malt, and that just keeps them all in a nice nice place. I hope that makes sense between the uh, non-linear uh, color corrections that need to determine what the pixel is before it makes the color correction and the linear color corrections that pretty much just apply to the whole image at once. And this is something that really uh, haunts comps that I see um, is when people uh, you know, forget to do this on pre malt and they get these, uh, here's a really drastic example, but they get these extremely um, poor edges and it's not because they've keyed something incorrectly uh, it's not because their CG render is wrong it's because they've done a color correction that's kind of ruined their edge because the color correction thought the edge color was uh, a different pixel value than it really was so uh, just briefly here is a great example of the difference that you can get it's, it's a crazy difference, uh, depending on how far you've pushed the color correction. But, you know, and every comp is different, and a lot of times color corrects need to be pushed really far. Alright, so uh, I only got about one more tutorial for the Advanced King Breakdown series. We've gone over alpha, despell, and merge operation. The next tutorial is going to be uh, combining all of these sections uh, to make a nice uh, keying script and I've set up a uh, keying template uh, and we combine all these and uh, I show you things to avoid and things to look out for and uh, little clever tricks to help uh, combine the alpha display and merge operation section uh, together and uh, problems and solutions it's a good starting point and you guys can uh, adjust it from there uh, feel free to, to use it. I'll include that template script in my next tutorial. Uh, I really want to have it done within the next few weeks uh, because I'm moving uh, to London soon and I probably will not have that much time to do uh, these tutorials. So definitely going to try to get these to you guys soon and uh, stay tuned.